With support from the Heritage Lottery Fund, Federation State and Communities has been delivering Shrews Tales and More. It's a project that is driven by intergenerational activity to encompass and include all elements of the community within Shrewsbury Town. It focuses on the history of the Gay Meadow football ground, which is now no longer with us. We're filming here today at the Greenhouse Meadow, which is the new home of Shrewsbury Town Football Club. For over 125 years, Shrewsbury Town Football Club played at the Gay Meadow Stadium. It was a wonderful stadium that had a wonderful atmosphere and wonderful memories for so many people. Today that stadium is gone, but the memories live on. Shrews Tales and More has been an intergenerational project to capture those stories and the memories that people have had and ensure that those memories are saved for future generations to look, to enjoy and to learn from. Shrews Tales and More has been working with a number of partners to make the project a reality. Some of those partners include Age UK, the Shrews Trust, the club themselves and Shropshire Council. Each of the partners have had a defined role and a defined interest in the project. Some from an education perspective, some from a care for the elderly perspective and some from a holistic community perspective. But one of the strengths of the project has been that we have all worked together to make the project a reality. Ultimately, what we wanted to do was to offer a new learning opportunity for children that would excite them, would engage them, give teachers something different to have a look at that would mean something to them and, and their children. So it was an opportunity to bring in elements of the local community and at the same time give schools a real new opportunity to excite their children. One of the greatest partners of Shrews Tales and More has been the schools of Shrewsbury. As a collective, they have delivered on several elements of the project, those schools including Grange, Priory, Belvedere and Wakeman. Wakeman School was historically adjacent to the old Gay Meadow ground from which Shrews Town Football Club played. Belvedere and Priory have been working on collecting oral interviews, those stories that cover the living history of the club people such as the cleaner of the old club, the, the groundskeeper, players, ex-players, they've all been interviewed to collect a spoken history of the club. They have all created together a body of stories that will become the history of Shrewsbury Football Club and be entered into the archives of Shropshire for perpetuity. From our point of view, what attracted us was the idea of accumulating and creating an archive for the, for the football club because I knew, I knew we probably had a few bits and pieces but I knew that we certainly didn't have the substantial archive for the club um, and obviously you know, it's been a, a huge part of Shrewsbury life and uh, it would be really great to make sure that that was captured in some way. We needed some way to capture not just things like photographs, but we need to have stories. It's all about people. Football clubs are part of the community. And uh, so the idea of the Heritage Project stemmed really from that, a need of the football club to engage with its supporter base and finding out about its history so that we can actually let it carry on for future generations. So in a nutshell, that's why we really wanted to do it. I think knowing what the project entailed entailed um, with regards to getting the memorabilia together, working with the fans, um, it was something that our board felt very passionate about and we really wanted to get involved with it because it's not something that Shrewsbury Town Football Club really has, we don't have an archive of old material, old photos um, that the fans have access to. I think it was something that we wanted to try and um, improve on um, and obviously as a trust in a board of five, six, seven of us, it was something that we, we were able to put some time to and, um, and we've really enjoyed working on it. The project is, it, it, to me is very um, beneficial that there's been lots of people really interested, excited, keen to get involved and um, it brings the community of the club 
and the town together. Grange School have taken a more artistic approach to their involvement in the project. They've created a 23 metre mural that's now housed within the concourse area at the West Stand, just behind me here at the new Greenhouse Meadow. They've developed a cheerleading piece which will be performed on October the 8th in front of crowds of thousands here at the club on the pitch behind me. The intergenerational aspect of the project is incredibly important and younger and older people have been coming together throughout the history and the life of the project to work together on specific activities, to collect photographs and memorabilia, identify the stories behind those photographs. Younger and older people have been sitting down together, poring over old programmes, the, the adverts in those programmes, the team lineups, and teasing out the stories that are there to be captured but haven't previously been talked about. It's been a very important part of the project and Shrew's Tales and More is all the richer for that inter intergenerational activity. When we used to play the big clubs like the Man Cities and Everton's and all these other big clubs, they didn't like coming to Shrewsbury because the crowd were very close to the pitch, which gave an atmosphere for Shrewsbury yeah. And the pitch was very heavy at times in the winter, and they didn't like that either. So occasionally we used to win these big games, and uh, they used to dread coming to Shrewsbury because they might get knocked out of the cup. So it, that was one of the uh, things they feared was coming to Shrewsbury Town to play a cup game. And has the food got a lot better at football? Or has? The food. The food? Yeah. <laughs> you mean the food? Yeah. You haven't been eating our food, have you? <laughs> what made you suggest um, the food? Oh, just like when you were younger, when you support football, when you were younger, has the food like... So when I was about eight or nine, I went yeah. and bought something in those days. Yeah. Well, I didn't know whether we could afford it in those days at eight or nine. Um, I suppose it was a packet of crisps, and I suppose crisps stayed the same. But the Buffy bars at Gay Meadow and that's what they used to call them, the Buffy Bar. They were run voluntary by the supporters group who did a magnificent job because everything you sold in the Buffy, whether it be a packet of crisps or a drink or tea or coffee, the profits went straight to the football club. Um, I've had 20 odd years. I've had the ups, I've been finished bottom of the fourth division and I've finished top of the first division. I've got a few gongs and I've had a hell of a time and I wouldn't change one thing and I certainly wouldn't change of signing for Shrewsbury Town and being part of this town that I live here and when the end comes it'll be at Shrewsbury Town. At Shrewsbury Town in the 60s uh, under the guidance of the late Arthur Rowley who was one of the, one of the great managers at Shrewsbury and there's been many. Uh, the team were doing well we were involved in all the cup games. Uh, attendances were good, 8, 9, 10, 11,000. And the club did very well in the 60s. Visiting supporters, um, we used to have a part of the ground for the away supporters. There was only one way in and one way out of the game meadow. You basically got the home supporters and the away supporters walking together to the game meadow. There was no those on the left and those on the right. They'd walk in together, a lot of banter. We're going to win tonight and all this. It was only after the game and the team had lost that he got a bit more hiccupy. But I can't really remember many, many problems with supporters. 99% of football supporters are brilliant. Um, they travel. Uh, they win, they lose, they draw, they have banter. You've probably seen it on TV, you've seen it matches, they banter and shout to one another. After the game, they all walk home, get in their cars, get on the trains, get up on the buses, and look forward to the next game. So really, people through the years have not altered. 99.9% .9 are decent people, and uh, they just want to enjoy, they want to enjoy their team. They want to have a bit of banter. Uh, and at the other game, you know, you, you go to lots of these cities where two teams, of, local teams are playing each other, you know, and the banter 
after the game, they're all in the pub having a drink and chatting to one another, so I think football's done tremendously well. And I would always, 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 and have done, take my children or my grandchildren to football matches. Um, because I feel quite happy to do that. A particular highlight of Shrews Tales and More has been the memorabilia celebration event, an event that was held in February of 2011, organised by students from Shrewsbury Sixth Form College. The students who were studying leisure and tourism came together to organise, design and host a celebration event that captured the memorabilia and the photographs and the stories of Shrewstown Football Club. It involved over 20 students who worked collectively and together in a passionate and organised and very successful way to host the event. It was an overwhelming success with over 300 people coming along. People came from as far afield as London and even further. Memorabilia from all over the country came forth and it brought people together, it got them talking and it got them recognising just what a club like this means to the community and the history of that club, why it's so important to them. It was a wonderful event and it was a particular highlight of this project. So we were looking at what opportunities the project would offer to a variety of secondary school specialisms, technology, um, around science, around the arts. So we were trying to press a lot of buttons. Um, and the main one really from the project with its intergenerational nature was that for some of our schools, the agenda of the community cohesion, again, which is a term that really talks about schools becoming involved with their local communities and developing that aspect of their work. It gave them a solid opportunity. And the final bit was the, um, the gifted and talented agenda. So what could this project offer to schools, seek it to offer their pupils real challenge? As a trust, we've worked with the FSC before. Getting the community involved in Shrewsbury Town Football Club is something that both Martin James and, and the trust as a, as a the community entity want, wanted to do. Um, so the, the fact the FSC were obviously running the project and, and wanted us involved, um, we, we felt very strongly that we should be involved um, and it, it, it's been great to work with the schools, work with the football club um, to actually achieve what we, what we have achieved. I'm sitting in the, uh, the West Stand here and behind me inside the West Stand is the most fantastic mural. Um, which is a historical montage of the football club. And that's, again, we're talking about intergenerational, that's children, 12, 11, 12 year olds have actually designed and then actually drawn and painted that mural on the wall. Um, I've asked um, uh, Boy Martin to help put together um, a big piece uh, for the football ground to help the Grange School. And as I've worked with the Grange School before, I don't want to be part of the president that, I've, that would last here for a long time at the stadium. I think it's a, a massively big project, especially for the community of, of the town, to actually put something in that's going to be here for for hopefully tens, twenty years time, possibly even longer, um, is, is a massively important thing. It, it brings the whole community together, it's celebrating 125 years of the club, it's, it's celebrating the town, the people in it, um, and as you are the new generation coming through, um, it's, it's, it's getting the, 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 your generation involved within the community and the, the club, and I think it's a greatly important. Why do you think the, the project is important for the club? Um, because it's like memories of different times and everything and part of Shrewsbury, different parts of Shrewsbury. And it makes the whole place a lot brighter. I really do like art and since I had it with Shrewsbury Town that I was doing a mural for them I completely said yes. Um, what have you enjoyed most about the project? Uh, the whole drawing and the walking was brilliant. 
I really, really enjoyed it. Why do you think the mural project is important? Because it brings more people to watch the games. I think that we've done it really fast and um, it's looking really good so far. A young group of people of 12, 13, have actually themselves designed it and constructed it and finished it and painted it. And, you know, I hope they take uh, real pride in what so the young, the young community have achieved by doing this. Hello, we are standing outside the Waitman School and Arts College in Shrewsbury. We are both current pupils at the Waitman School and have been involved with a project called Shufi Tales. Over the past couple of weeks we have been interviewing many past teachers and have been finding out about their memories of the game meadow. In this video we will be re reliving all of those special memories of the stadium. The town used to send complimentary tickets for all the youngsters to go and watch the, the, uh, the, the, the professional match uh, and then they'd come down afterwards, half an hour later they'd be playing on the same pitch, you know. Brian Perry would come out and, and fork it and make sure that it was playable. And uh, But he always insisted, that we, we said that we would change here. And he said no. Uh, he said if you're going to do it, you're going to do it properly. They're going to get changed in the proper changing rooms where the professionals are. He said they're going to go in the tunnel and they're going to come out of the tunnel with the referees. He, he said if we're going to have it done, it's going to be done properly. That was, it was great, you know. When we had the year sevens in, you know, when they come to have a look around the school yeah. for a day, you probably did that not yeah. so long ago. Um, well, in the afternoon, the, the football players used to come and take a session with all of our year sevens uh, on that day, so that was great. And they also um, helped us develop the girls' football here when we started the girls' football. On the few occasions that the school did use it, um, we never told the visiting school that they were going to play on the game meadow. So they would arrive at the school here, and then I would tell the member of staff and say, we're not, we're not playing, you know, we're not changing here today, we're going down here. And the, the youngsters on the, the opposition like, couldn't believe it, they were going into the changing rooms. They were um, in, in the changing rooms and they were wondering, who do changes here, who do changes here? And, uh, and then, as I said, Brian said we'd have it right. We used to get a, a, a neutral ref in and we'd come out of the tunnel and these kids who are expected to play on the Wakeman fields were playing on the Gay Meadow. It's, you know, once in a lifetime for some of them. You know? Yeah, it's great. Nearly 18 months on now, the project is nearly at its conclusion at least in its first phase and this is exactly what Shrew's Tales and More has been. It's been the first phase of a wider activity. It's something that has now gained momentum and it's something that the club and the community will take forth themselves. The Federation of Stadium Communities has made so many different aspects of the project a reality but it's the people that have been involved in the project that have really put the hard work into making things real. I'd like to add my thanks to hundreds of people who have been involved in this project. That's all the children, the people who have been interviewed, the Federation of Stadium Communities, the Shrews Trust, other that have been involved in this. Because without the people, you can't actually make this happen. And the whole project is about people. It's a good circle, isn't it? Those people now have an archive of stories, of photographs, of memorabilia that they can visit at Shrewsbury Archives in the town centre. They can pop down there whenever they like. They can take their, their sons and daughters, they can take their grandparents to look at the history of Shrewsbury Town Football Club. The club themselves have committed to continuing on with further aspects of the project. This is only the first phase and it will continue for many years, judging by the passion that both the club and the community have put into the project. <laughs>